Good morning, Bethlehem Covenant Church. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday, January 24th. Hope that you are well. In John 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, he sees a wolf coming and he leaves and abandons the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And I lay down my life for them. In another scripture, it talks about how Jesus knows each of us by name. And we belong to him. We are his. That's why he cares so much about us. And what happens to us. And so he is that good shepherd. And we're going to look at that today in our church service. And all that that means. I'll be preaching about that. But I think about all the different times in my life. When the Lord has come. And helped me out of a whole lot of jams. Can you think about that in your own life too? Or, or God has provided for you. When you wondered how. You know. And, uh, and other times when he's guided you exactly where you needed to be. And so we have a good shepherd who loves us so much, knows that we, we are the sheep of his pasture. He created us. He knows us by name, knows how many hairs are on your head. And he loves you. He's got a plan and is good. And, and uh, so we can trust him. And so we're going to look at that today. And I hope that it would be an, an encouragement to you. Um, I wanted to mention a couple announcements for us as we begin this service. Uh, the first one is this. If you're watching this, you're most likely watching it on YouTube. We also put it on Facebook, but it's still kind of connected to YouTube. And um, if so, right below, there should be a button that hits subscribe. And we would ask that you would do that, that you would subscribe to our Bethlehem Covenant Church page here on YouTube. And it uh, alerts you every time we post something new. And so sometimes we post during the week. It might be an announcement. It might be something for the kids. It might be a devotional. Um, but as we continue on to grow and, and expand our ministry, we want to know who's watching and listening and want to make sure we get out the information to you. And so there's no cost, of course, when you subscribe. It's just every time we post something, you would be alerted. That's what that means. And so if you want to uh, subscribe to our channel, that is great. You can do that below. The second announcement I have is that today at 4 o'clock, we have our annual meeting. And if you're a member of our church, uh, we encourage you to join in. If you're not a member and just want to know some of the stuff that's going on, you can feel free to join in too. But uh, all of our members there, we have sent out an email to you with the link to the Zoom call that we're going to do at 4 o'clock. And uh, you should have also received the attachment of all the annual reports and the budgets and things like that. And so please join us at 4 o'clock on that link. Join in on the Zoom. There'll be a way to vote on there even and for our new members and our new board members and our budget. And, and there'll be opportunities where we'll be able to dialogue during that meeting about ideas for 2021 and celebrate all that God has done in this really different year that we've just had, but also what, uh, what is God's plans for his church in this coming year. So please join us for our annual meeting today at 4 o'clock on Zoom. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always text or call me, and, and I'll hope to be able to answer those. But we are so thankful that you're a part of our church family. And we have people who are joining us from other countries, other states, and, and they've been joining us week after week. And we see you as a part of our church family, too. And because today, you know, the church is scattered abroad. Some of us are in homes nearby each other. Some of us are gathering in person. Some of us are other states, but we all come together in Christ. And God is doing a work in each of our neighborhoods and in our lives. And so um, we're glad that you're a part of this and have been a part of this. Um, I hope you have a great service. And again, remembering all that it means that the Lord is our shepherd. God bless you today. I am going to read Psalm 23. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning, kids. Well, when I was in school, I had a really hard time with the subject of history. American history, world history, it didn't matter the kind. I always struggled with history. It was just seeing the overall picture and trying to find all those little details of where it fit in in that bigger picture. It always stressed me out. You know, sometimes I think the people of God too had an issue with their history. God's people, the Israelites, seemed to at one moment trust him and listen to him and obey God. And the next minute they were wandering away from God and then couldn't figure out why they had no peace in their lives. And then they'd start this cycle over and over and over again. They'd trust God for a little bit and then they'd wander away and they'd trust God and wander away. It seemed they just couldn't learn from their own history. You know, but the best part is, is no matter where the Israelite people went, God always knew where they were and was always listening to them, just like God does with us today. God is always listening to us when we have problems or when we cry out to him, but he always knows where we are, even when we walk away. So kids, this week, remember that God always hears us when we cry out to him and that he is always right by our side because we are never hidden from God's sight. All right, our scripture for today, if you'd like to follow along with me in your Bibles there, um, is going to be in John chapter 10 as we continue on with our Names of Jesus uh, series that we're on. We're going to look at the Good Shepherd today. I'm going to look at some verses here from John 10, uh, and um, we're going to do it a little differently even. I'm going to read verse 11 first, John 10 verse 11, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read verses 2 through 4 and 14 through 18. Um, but I wanted to get that John 10, 11 first off. And it says this, I am the good shepherd. This is Jesus speaking. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then back to verse 2. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Then jump down to verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and, knows, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This is the command I have received from my father. So again, this morning, um, we continue on and look at another name of Jesus that helps us know better who our Savior is and what he has come to do in our life and in our world. We've looked at the names Chief Cornerstone, Bread of Life, Light of the World, and today I want us to look at the Good Shepherd. And this is a big one, so important. The Lord is our Shepherd. Psalm 23 is undoubtedly one of the favorite psalms of most Christians, used in nearly every funeral. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. It's the image of God being our shepherd, going ahead of us, his people, leading us to where he knows we need to be, guiding us in what is right, protecting us from the harm. A shepherd in Bible times. Um, a shepherd in Bible times had to have courage because you weren't just watching your sheep in one location. You had to have courage because as you take them across the, the wilderness, there's beasts out there. And you're going to have to fight those off who want your sheep for dinner. A shepherd's staff was not just a walking stick, kind of a part of the ensemble. No, it was also a weapon that would strike those beasts or a hook that would rescue and pull that, that sheep off of a cliff or a thorn bush that they had foolishly wandered into. The shepherd uh, was tough. The shepherd was constantly having to go after strays. Those who left his care and would wander off and find themselves lost. He would leave the flock of 99 and he'd go after that one and bring him on back. The image of the shepherd is one often used in the Bible for our Lord and God. The name shepherd was often used also as uh, the word for king in the Bible. King David was a shepherd as a boy, and then he became a king as a man, where God called him to shepherd and watch over his people Israel. So shepherd was interchangeable and a common word for king. Well, Jesus is the king of all kings. The word shepherd was also a word used for a teacher or a rabbi, because their words would influence and lead their students. In fact, in Ezekiel 34, God rebukes the kings and the religious leaders of Israel for not doing their job and leading uh, his people. He says in Ezekiel 34, 1-6, The word of the Lord came to me, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not the shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, you clothe yourself with the finest wool, you slaughter the choicest of animals, but you do not take care of others. You've not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured among you. You've not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You've ruled them harshly and brutally. So they have become scattered because there was no shepherd, no one who searched or looked for them. He's talking to the rabbis and to the kings of the land who did not lead and watch over his people. So God says in Ezekiel 34, 11, because you haven't done this, I will. He says in that verse, he says, I will rescue them. I myself will come down and search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places they have scattered on the day of darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. In other words, the sleek and the strong meant those who fattened themselves on the oppressing of other sheep. The Lord will make it right. So when Jesus comes and he declares, I am the good shepherd, he is saying a lot. He is saying, I am the Lord God who has come down from heaven to do as I told you I would do in Ezekiel. I will gather my sheep and I will rule them with justice. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak and I will go look for the strays. I am here to do what the teachers and the leaders have not done. I will shepherd my people. And Jesus makes mention of this again right before he feeds the 5,000. In that story, it says in Mark 6.34, Jesus looked over the crowd 
And so many that had gathered to hear what he had to say, they clung to his every word. They were hungry for truth. They hadn't heard it before. They came from all over the land, young and old, male and female, Jew and Gentile. And it says in Mark 6, 34, when Jesus saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them. Why? It says, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so he says, so it says, he began to teach them many things. He had compassion on the people because they had lived like sheep without a shepherd for so long, starving for the truth of God, for guidance, someone to teach them for goodness, for holiness, someone to lead them for love. And the Lord was all of that. He was gathering his people back. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. <laughs> he doesn't just mean any old shepherd. He, but the good shepherd. And what makes him so good? Well, he says in John 10, I'm the good shepherd because the good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. Jesus would teach that a, that a hired hand, you know, when he sees a wolf coming, well, he runs away and abandons the sheep because they're not his sheep. You know, he cares more about himself than rescuing them. They're, they're just sheep. But to Jesus, they are much more than that. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. These are my sheep. I know my sheep and they know me. I know them each by name. And they are mine. And he's speaking about us. And his love for us. Jesus was not just any teacher, not just any king. He is the Lord God himself. He who made us and we are his, everyone. These are his people, the sheep of his pasture. He cares about you. He sees you. He knows you. He can tell when you're missing. He looks out over his flock and he can tell. He knows Danny's missing over there. Where did Danny go? I got to go get him. And he saves you by laying down his life for yours. That's what makes him alone the good shepherd. Isaiah 40 verse 11 says, He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. My mom and dad, they don't got any sheep. But they got dogs. Uh, always had since I was eight years old. They love their dogs. They have two dogs right now. Both of them Pomeranians. Tiny little things. Yappers. They always go for the Pomeranians. And I, but they're cute. But uh, they have had them a long time. These two. Punkin and uh, Minnie. And they have always loved taking dogs, their dogs on walks. It's a daily thing. The dogs get, you know, super excited about it. Whenever my parents mention the word walk, they go crazy, you know. But little Minnie, uh, she is getting older. And she's got some health problems and some arthritis. And she can't walk very good or very long. And if you think about it, uh, you know, a mile walk for a dog whose legs are like three inches. Boy, that must feel like a marathon. Well, I found it so enduring that last summer when we went to visit them, we went for a walk and the dogs are all jumping up and excited to go. And, and dad knows that many can't do it. She's excited, but, but what my dad does, and I find this is so enduring, he puts that dog in his arms and he carries her the whole way. You know, she's got her little leash on and he'll set her down when they get halfway or so into the park. And, and you know, and he just lets her kind of wander around a little bit and then puts her back into his arms for the whole journey. Every step, he carries her close to his heart. It is love that brings her along doesn't want her to miss. And I think about that with our Lord and God. He knows us by name. He knows our weaknesses and what we can handle. He sees when we're missing and He loves us. He knows when we can't do it. He knows when we would like to, 
but just don't have the strength. But he doesn't leave us behind. He picks us up. He carries us close to his heart that we still might be able to go. He doesn't want us to miss a thing. The Lord is the good shepherd. Jesus even gave a parable about the shepherd who had a hundred sheep. One went missing. And instead of just writing that one off, <laughs> it's only one, he went looking for it. And he didn't rest until he found it. He left the other 99 to go for it. And then he put it on his shoulders and he brought it back home. And he said all of heaven rejoiced with him when he found his lost sheep. This is the heart of God for you. This is what he, he meant when it says in Psalm 121 that he watches over you. And he won't slumber or sleep. He watches over your life. Your coming and your going. Both now and forevermore. Because you're his. And he's that good shepherd. He has compassion. And he comes to us. And there have been so many times in my life. When I either began to wander away into places that I shouldn't. And he found me and brought me back. Or times that I've just been tired and drying up. <laughs> and the Lord always seems to know. And he fills my cup and restores my soul. He did this even just last week for me. I've had some really busy and stressful weeks. And I had another day last week that was full of just one thing after another and and then all of a sudden, a cancellation and another cancellation in my afternoon left a whole afternoon free. And I was in Lincoln at the time that they had been canceled. And, and I was driving home then on 70th. And as I happened to pass the park there at Fremont and 70th, I decided to drive in just for a moment. And I found a quiet spot and I parked the car and I opened my Bible and I just read for me. And I read only a couple verses, but they were what I needed to hear. And then I just sat there and I talked to God a while as a friend. And I sat in stillness. And then actually I fell asleep right there in my car. <laughs> I closed my eyes and I guess I needed rest. I woke up a half hour later. And I just prayed some more. And I left my burdens with God. It was like a two hour gift of rest. That God must have known that I needed. My shepherd was leading me to still waters. And this is how it happens sometimes, you know. When we don't even realize we're being led until afterwards. Other times he shepherds us through his word. Where we find his will and direction and guidance to make a good choice. Other times it's internal. It's by the Holy Spirit which he's given us. That as we go about our day his spirit will convict us in the moment. Or warn us when we're doing something we shouldn't. Or tell us uh, to help a friend. His voice speaks if we'll listen. At times, He shepherds us through other people who give us encouragement or a loving rebuke or a small group or a church service. I don't know how many times people have come up to me after church and, and said, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Did you know what I was going through in my life? Were you speaking to me? And no, I didn't know what you were going through, but God did. And no, I wasn't speaking. That was the Lord speaking to you. He knew what you needed in this moment. He does it. He shepherds his people. I've heard others say that how a sermon, you know, fit with something they heard on the radio, which fit with what another person had said to them also. And all these things coming together. It's the Lord shepherding your life. All we need. And, and we need him. My goodness, we need him. Isaiah 53 says, we need him because we all like sheep 
go astray, each of us turning to our own way. We're human. Our eyes wander. We get lost. We get pulled into sin, which is so great. We all think we know better than God at times. We walk away. God commands this. We do that. One step away, following our lusts or our desires and, or the world instead of following our shepherd and listening to his voice and staying in his truth. We're easily led astray. By the latest teaching or a clever politician or a group of friends who pressure us into believing something different or social media guru or just our own sinful desire. We like sheep, we go astray. So the call of a Christian is to trust and follow our shepherd. To stay in his fold. To be a good sheep. To let him lead our life every day. And to do this means you got to become a follower. Everybody wants to be a leader. But first you got to be a follower of Jesus. Or you'll be leading people in the wrong way. The world says no. It's your life. You do with what it, you want to do. Whatever makes you happy, you only live once. You just follow you. But God's word says, no, <laughs> it's not about that. It's not about us. We were created by him and for him. We live for God to obey his commands and do his will. And his will is not to harm us, but to give us hope and a future. And he loves us, even laid down his life for us. So we can trust him in his plans, which are good and perfect. He knows better then we know. So we're called to be sheep in his pasture. To be a follower of the good shepherd. The Lord said to each of his disciples, follow me. And he says the same to you. Four things to take away. One, we need to know that when we follow the Lord, we're never going to be in want. To let him be our shepherd and Lord of each day, you're never going to be in want. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Matthew 6, Jesus said, Don't worry about your life. God knows what you need before you even ask. But we worry every day because we don't trust Him. We worry about a lot of stuff. We worry about our job, our money, reputation, our kids, our tomorrow, next year. Jesus says, Don't worry what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to wear. Is life not more important than this? Look at the birds of the air. They don't store away and yet the Father feeds them. Aren't you not more valuable than they? And look at the flowers of the field. They do not labor or spin, but not even Solomon in all of his riches and splendor was dressed as beautiful as one of these. You of little faith, he says. Don't worry about these things. Your Father knows you need them. But rather seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you as well. In other words, follow Jesus and he'll take care of the details. How many times have I not trusted in him and I've gone to look for my own answers and trying to fix it and gotten exhausted trying to do what he's already got worked out and planned for me if I would just trust him. We go looking in all the wrong places for what he's already planned to provide in time. If we'll just trust him, he's going to do it. We go searching somewhere else for what the world says we need or where, where to find it, and it's not there. Our job as a sheep is to just follow Jesus. His job as the shepherd is to lead us. Whatever we need, he will provide. We may at times wish we had more. We may, you know, want this new whatever or this thing which isn't good for us. We may covet, envy, be greedy. But the want spoken of here is what we really need. When the Lord is our shepherd, he will lead us to green pastures, to real food <laughs> that is good for our soul. He'll open up doors that we're meant to walk through. He'll close the ones he's not willed for us. He will provide for us, take care of our families. I think here of the Apostle Peter. He was a fisherman. And it was a tough life. He worked so hard and he often struggled. In his own he tried to fish in the Sea of Galilee. And in one Bible story we read that in the morning his nets were completely empty. He caught nothing all night long. 
But just then Jesus showed up on the shore and he began to teach the crowd. And Peter stayed there fixing his nets and listening. And when Jesus was done, he got over to Peter's boat and he said, um, how's fishing? And Peter told him. And he told Peter to pull out just a little way and to let down his nets one more time. And at first, Peter didn't want him. He's tired. <laughs> but because Jesus said so, he did. And as soon as he did, the nets immediately filled so full of fish, they began to break. Two boatfuls of fish were caught in a moment. That is what our God can do. This is the difference with Jesus. Are you tired of doing life on your own? Searching in this world for the answers that he already has? Going about things the world's way only to end up with empty nets? Are you tired of trying to parent by your own strength and failing at it? We are busy, but our nets are empty. Because we're meant to follow Jesus. To yield to his voice. To pray and listen to where he says go. He is our shepherd. If we'll follow, we won't be in want. About 15 years ago, I was serving in Canada, newly married, had a couple of babies, uh, 15 years into ministry, or I mean, five years into ministry at that point, and, um, and I was done already. I was all dried up. Each week was a burden to preach and to prepare for Sunday. I had lost the joy of it. I was tired of empty nets every week, and I was exhausted. My heart was full of worry. I'd almost given up. In fact, I didn't think I could keep going. But in a very real moment with God, God spoke to me so clear, saying, are you done trying this on your own? Working in your own strength, doing it your way. Trying to manufacture sermons out of nothing and words that only please and entertain. And as clear as anything, I felt God say to me, I will give you what you are to say. Just preach my word. Just tell them what I say. And from that day on, I began to simply just read the Bible and let God write the sermon. And since then, I have not stressed over what to say. I always have something to say. You might say I have too much to say. <laughs> For me, it was the difference, though, between empty nets and overflowing ones. And it was a subtle thing. Letting Jesus. Second thing I want to take away. I want to take away is Jesus said, my sheep will know my voice. I talked to a modern shepherd in Israel. He had about 40 sheep, was taking them through the wilderness. He told me that his sheep and him have worked together for a while. And they follow him because they know his voice. They know he is good. They know that he will take them where the food is. <laughs> and he told me that if I, right there, were to, to, you know, try to tell them to go over here or whatever, they would ignore me and they wouldn't even look up. But if he, in the quietest voice even, a whisper almost, were to say, here we go, they would look up and go to wherever he is. They are trained to listen to the shepherd's voice. All other voices don't get them riled up. This needs to be us with Jesus. We need to train our ears and our minds to know the voice of our shepherd Jesus so well that we can discern him from all the other voices. And the way we do this is the Bible. It is his word. The reason so many people today are being fooled into following a whole lot of crazy things that they think are from God is because they don't know this. They don't know his word. They don't know the difference. They don't know his voice. They hear something spiritual or something that sounds kind of good or somebody quotes a scripture or something or it's something that they long to hear. And so they run and they follow those voices to nothing. We need to know the voice of Jesus. We need to ask, would Jesus say that? Or ask us to do that? Because there's many false prophets out there. Blind leading the blind. You got to know his voice. His word. It's not always the popular thing. May not always be the comfortable path. But it's never wrong. We live in a dangerous time in America. 
every politician knows they need the Christian vote to win. And so they'll say things they know a Christian wants to hear. They'll promise things as long as they get that vote. And it's tough sometimes to know who to follow. We can get so excited to hear someone talk about Jesus in public that we just follow them blindly. We get suckered right in. Or teachers, you know, we really smart people with many different degrees. And a kid comes into their class and they sound smart and they got all these degrees. They think they must know something. And so we believe whatever they say, even if it's against God. Or a big one for me is that if somebody compliments me, if they say something nice to me and like me, well, boy, they could get me to do a whole lot of bunch of stuff because I like being liked and I like being flattered, you know. We got to know our shepherd's voice or we can be tricked by a whole lot of wolves in sheep's clothing by a lot of other voices. My daughter, when she was about five or six, she said this really cute thing. We were driving along and she said, Dad, how do you know it is God speaking to you? Because sometimes when I think I hear God, he sounds a lot like me in my head. And we thought that was cute. But over the years, I have held on to that story because I can see the powerful truth within it. Many people think it's Jesus when really it's just what they want to hear. But is it really the Lord or is it us doing what we want? Do we know the difference in the voices in our head and the voice of the news and the voice of the classroom and the voice of a friend or Jesus? There was a time when Peter even thought he knew what was best. And he rebuked Jesus for saying Jesus was going to the cross. And there was no way Peter was going to allow that to happen. But Jesus had to say to his own friend and leader of the apostles, get behind me, Satan. You don't have the things of God in mind. Jesus knew the difference. He knew Peter loved him, but didn't know what was best to do. Jesus was so close to the Father that he could tell when even one of his friends wasn't speaking truth from God. Can you tell the difference between all the voices that you hear? The third thing is a takeaway is I was struck by Ezekiel 34 16 where it says the Lord himself will tend to his sheep and will search for the lost and strengthen the weak and I was struck by the final part of that sentence which goes on to say but to the sleek and strong I will destroy. I will shepherd my flock with justice. The Lord watches over us with justice. I think this is particularly here. He's talking to King Herod who got rich on the backs of his own poor people or someone like Pharaoh who held his people in slavery or the Pharisees who ate so well while all the people starved. They preached generosity while showing none. They weighed down on the people heavy burdens and never did anything to help them or his own people who at times would unfairly treat the poor, the sick or the foreigner. Today, we see so many injustices in our world. We see things that aren't right. What we're told here is that our shepherd, he cares about this. He not only cares about us getting to heaven, but he cares about us treating our neighbor well, like we would want to be treated. He cares about us doing good and standing up to what is evil. In Bible times, a shepherd often had to fight off a lion or a wolf who would prey on his sheep in the Judean wilderness. A shepherd had to be strong and a defender of the sheep. Our shepherd will defend us. We'll work for what is right in this world. And he desires us to care about it too. You know, sometimes I'm so interested in keeping the peace or getting along that I might not always speak up for what is right. Or who is being unfairly treated. Sometimes I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to fight. But then we can sometimes then allow wolves into the sheep's pen. Or live in some false sense of peace instead of a true one. True peace requires change. Requires confrontation at times with sin. Requires love that is more than just sentimental. But advocacy and care, and support, and doing what is right for all, not just me. I believe our shepherd leads his people to work for justice. 
Micah 6, 8 says, I've told you what is good and what the Lord requires of you. It is to do justice. It is to love mercy. It is to walk humbly with your God. Our shepherd is gentle with the broken and the hurting, but he is tough on the sleek and the strong, on evil, on darkness. He is a defender of the righteous. Every time we have seen a snake at our house, it has been Carrie who has found it. And in those moments, she is not the gentle Carrie that you have all come to know and love so well. Her children are playing nearby. She sees a snake and all heaven breaks loose. And she attacks that thing like a mama bear would. Now, mice are a different story for her. She climbs on a chair. I don't get it. But a snake, she goes after that thing. And I've told you what she did to a gang in Chicago picking on a boy. This is the heart of the Lord. He crushed the head of the serpent on the cross. He showed no mercy with sin, but was merciful to the sinner. And he shepherds us with justice. He separates the sheep from the goats uh, based on who fed the hungry, who clothed the naked, who visited the prisoner, and who did what was right. He expects us, his people, to care about justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly and to fight not with swords, but with the word of God and with the spirit and in prayer and in love and with truth and in standing in solidarity with others and doing service in his name and seeking just laws and overcoming evil with good. Our shepherd shepherds us in the way of justice. And then the final thing I want to say about this good shepherd is 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4, where the Lord speaks to the elders of the church now. He speaks to the elders of the church. To those who have walked with him a while, who know him and have heard his voice and have seen his faithfulness throughout their life. And he says to them in 1 Peter 5, 1, be shepherds of God's flock under your care. Serve as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing. Don't be greedy, but eager to serve. Not lording overs, but by being an example to younger believers. And then he says this, and when the chief shepherd appears you will receive a crown of glory that will not fade away. Our shepherd is coming back soon. But until that day, each of us is to look out for the church, for one another. Not just those who are on a board, but all, all the elders among us. Not just formal elders, but everyone can be an example. Leaders in, in the church, you know, uh, need to do their job well. Everyone, you know, can go and look after somebody that they haven't seen in a while. Give them a call. Where you been? Just making sure you're okay. Encouraging somebody not to give up. And so those elders are both in positions but not. Looking after God. Watch God's flock watching over where He has placed you. Not because you must, but because you're willing. And the idea here, it's kind of like the first followers, you know. You follow the Lord, the shepherd. Keep your eyes on him and others will follow you as you're being that example. As parents, we must be like this for our kids. Our kids will follow us. So we got to follow the shepherd. And they got to see that. They got to see that we're following the shepherd in our decisions. As we pray about things in our family, as we read the Bible, they're watching. As we listen for his voice and they see us doing what we're doing. And they will do what we do. And they won't do what they don't see us doing. Shepherd the flock under your care. Follow him. And let them see you following him. Amen.